What's up guys, this is Boss Saiyan here bringing you your monthly Star Wars CCG goodness. This month we are looking at a um, Bounty Hunters on Tatooine kind of casual deck. I built this deck because uh, a good friend of mine, Derek over at CCG Replace, has a light side Jawa deck and we wanted to make it more thematic. Um, but I wanted to play with Bounty Hunters, so I thought that I will share this deck with you guys. Remember, this is a casual deck. I kind of just opened the folders, opened the boxes, and picked cards up that I had, uh, with perhaps a couple of exceptions that I might point out as we get to them. Either way, we start with our objective, which of course is Court of the Vile Gangster. Uh, we predominantly use this objective for um, this side. Um, gives us some nice starting locations with some nice force generation. And I don't really use this card to get docking bays out. Naturally, if you want to make this deck more competitive, uh, this is actually a brilliant card to be able to pull, um, you know, those ever important docking bays out of your deck. Mind you, there is a lot of hate uh, from the uh, Episode 1 cards onwards into virtual cards for uh, single-sided uh, force generation docking bays. Nevertheless, I really like this card because it gives plus two forfeit to all my bounty hunters and it makes them immune to uh, Goonie Tay. Um, besides that, again, as I said, we don't really want to flip this objective. In fact, we almost actively want to avoid flipping this objective. I don't want to lose the benefits of the extra forfeit value and all those things. And I particularly like the idea that um, if, for any reason, you, do, you end up playing against a light side deck that doesn't really want to come to Tatooine, then you just get that... Uh, the immediate opponent loses one force if they can't hold any Bastion down in Tatooine. So what Court of the Vile Gangster will give us are three lovely starting locations. We get Jabba's Palace, Audience Chamber, the Great Pit of Carcoon, and Jabba's Dungeon. Uh, let's have a quick look at these. Immediately, we start with five force generation, two from there, one, one, and of course, one for yourself. Uh, the audience chamber will play an important role in this deck. This is our main fortress, and it allows us to once per game deploy uh, an alien uh, here from reserve deck. That will often be Mighty Jabba. Great Pit of Carcoon, really mostly just force generation. We don't run the uh, we don't run the Sarlacc, so it's pretty much just a blank uh, location for us as well. The dungeon is important as it allows us to deliver captives, and then we can retrieve two force, um, which can be pretty useful. Uh, it certainly can mean the difference between winning and losing in this game. I will, however. Uh, advise anybody not to really bring more than one captive here because that will mean that you will have to flip uh, Court of the Vile Gangster and uh, I shall enjoy watching you die is really irrelevant for this deck uh, we don't really want to feed anything to the um, uh, what's the uh, the Rancor we don't have the Rancor pit, we don't have the Sarlacc, any of that stuff, so we're just trying to harness this, ideally as long as possible, but you know, once the board has been set up and you just want to carry on retrieving force, bring your captives to dungeon, doesn't really matter that much if you then flip to this side. So these are our three starting locations, and right now uh, I'm running Twi'lek Advisor uh, for basically two reasons. A it's in flavor with the deck, obviously. Um, Bib Fortuna giving advice to Jabba is really cool. So using this as a starting interrupt, actually it allows us to uh, play any effect. Um, unlike mobilization points that are 
obviously has requirements of the effect having to play for free and always immune to alter uh, onto your side of the table. Uh, this actually will allow us to pick uh, any effect from our deck, but um, the three main ones I uh, tend to consider to start with any one of the three, of course. Um, I think uh, often the most generic one is all wrapped up just basically allowing you to capture very easily uh, not only capturing very easily but also um, uh, uh, again just having some extra advantage uh, giving your uh, we have a prisoner and Uta, Guta, Solo play for free and are immune to sense we run we have a prisoner uh, so that could be good mind you I'm, I'm well people I play with, we don't play sense, alter, and control because they're just all nasty, nasty, nasty cards and take away from the casual fun. If you kind of want to ramp up on your opponent uh, having a lot of aliens, uh, then his name is Anakin, is the effect to go with, just generally making it more difficult for your opponent to deploy aliens. And also it screws with docking bays, as I said, there's a lot of hate for uh, docking bays from the uh, episode 1 cards and reflections well yeah, reflect, uh, reflections cards not reflections Tatooine um, the third one is common villainy, which of course works really well in this deck so if you feel like all wrapped up is not the effect to start with for you, common villainy is great Twilight Advisor will allow you to deploy this effect because of its very loose requirement for for an effect and this card uh, you deploy it on the audience chamber which you start with so you can immediately get it out while all your ability on a table is provided only by aliens and independent starships your aliens and starships deploy minus one and you retrieve two force when you initiate battle uh, so obviously even if we don't start with scum and villainy it is definitely one of those effects that it's definitely worthwhile digging for. It is a massive advantage for this deck. Yes, again, there is some hate that shuts down Scum and Villainy, but um, you know, having it out is better than not having it out, and then you can just kind of work around the, the hate um, if you can. Unless the card cancels it, in which case you have to deal with the card that cancels it. If you can. Anyway, these are the three effects. Uh, any one of the three that we uh, search for with Twilight Advisor and start in the game with. And um, that's it for our basic setup. Let's look at our additional locations. Uh, they were, they're all Tatooine and Jabba's Palace. So we got the Crate Dragon Pass. Just uh, ensuring that you get some additional. Battle Destinies, uh, that is a really, really, really solid card for this deck, as, of course, as I said, you predominantly have Tatooine sites. You do have, obviously, quite a few Jabba's Palace as well, but you have a lot of Tatooine sites too. We, of course, have Jabba's Palace, uh, which, of course, will allow us to uh, deploy uh, any additional Jabba's Palace site from the deck. We only really have the one, but they're still deck thinning, and anyway, it's two extra force that uh, it generates for us. I run the Tatooine Desert Landing site uh, because it is a very nice one sided two force for me, nothing for the opponent. And yes, we do run Mole in this deck uh, in true episode one fashion where all the action, really most, well not all the action, a lot of the action happens on Naboo, but a lot of action does happen on Tatooine as well. So uh, yeah, if we can if we can play uh, Maul for free, that is pretty cool. We have Lars's Moisture Farm, which is probably one of the most macabre uh, <laughs> locations in the game. You actually see uh, the burnt uh, yeah, the burnt um, remains of uh, Barry Wendt Laws. Um, sad times, sad times. Anyway, uh, the location is really cool though. Odd one to add one to each of your weapon destiny draws here. And if you control Force Drain plus one, nice little place to Force Drain, nice little place to control. It is uh, a good location for the dark side. 
Of course, we do it on Mos Eisley, another great location for uh, Tatooine and Darkseid specifically. Makes your bounty hunters power and forfeit plus one at this particular place, which is really good for us. And then we do run the uh, Rancor Pit, just so there is a location to search out. And again, it's a one-sided um, location. It generates force for us, but it doesn't generate force for our opponent. As I said, um, we don't play the Rancor Pit, uh, but it's just extra force generation again. And uh, last but not least, we do run the uh, planet side as well, Tatooine. Uh, we do have uh, three ships in the deck. This is a very much a Tatooine um, location, land location focused deck. But we do, as I said, have a little bit of space defense. And uh, if we can control Tatooine, uh, then we can get some really nice bonus down on, um, on the uh, locations. Okay, so that's our... A little setup of extra locations. We got 10 locations all together in the deck. We can obviously, we, we immediately start with three. We can fish more stuff out. So, hopefully, ideally, you don't get too uh, location starved and you don't end up flipping too many zeros for destinies. Let's look at our warriors, the bread and butter of the deck. I already mentioned we run Mighty Jabba. I do have, I think, pretty much all the different uh, Jabba warriors except the episode 1 uh, Jabba which I don't think it's a good card certainly not the initial print I don't know if there's a virtual version that is better I do like this mighty Jabba a lot though it draws battle destiny uh, straight off the bat um, it deploys for 3 or to a Jabba's palace side so basically with the audience chamber you can pull this guy and deploy for three on the very first turn and then you can immediately start to defend the audience chamber as i said that will pretty much be your base of operations uh one with an alien leader adds one battle destiny and uh, the only other thing that we care about is may not be targeted by weapons unless your other aliens present are each hit and immune to attrition less than four so which leaders do we run to make uh, Jabba draw an extra battle destiny and of course um, not be able to be targeted unless everybody else is down. Well of course we do run Bib Fortuna, uh, our good old advisor, well usually good advisor except when of course uh, Luke is using Jedi mind tricks on him. Um, Bib Fortuna, it's, he's very powerful, but he, he has very low ability, of course. However, what we do get from him is that your opponent's characters of ability less than four may not move from same side as Bib to uh, Jabba's palace site. So you can uh, basically put this guy out to, um, uh, I guess, the Jabba's palace site. Um, and uh, your opponent will have to have really nice big ability to be able to actually move towards the audience chamber. Very thematic, of course. Uh, and again, as I said, very importantly, he is a leader. Our other leader is Chal Bakan. He is a fantastic card for any alien deck, realistically. Um, he uh, deploys for four, which is neither here or there, but when you deploy him or her, you may take one non-unique alien into hand from reserve deck. Now, I actually cut the non-unique aliens from this deck, to be fair. I did run like a, a Gamorrean Guard or something like that. Um, I kind of just wanted to focus a little bit more on the Bounty Hunters, but again, if this was a more competitive one, you definitely want to run at least one maybe two non-unique aliens just to thin the deck again uh, but where I like this guy is uh, is that your aliens deploy minus one to same or adjacent Tatooine site so if you actually have Jabber in your starting hand put this guy down onto the audience chamber you can search for this guy 
uh, with the audience chamber, drop him, and then your Jabba's going to come down for two in the next turn. It's just uh, just setting up more power there and making sure that you already have a leader there when Jabba comes down. And then, um, you know, you are already in a fairly good position. Our third and final leader is Prince Chizor. Uh, I love this card. Uh, it's a fantastic card. I love the fact that he is immune to attrition less than five, while Vader, not here, we don't run Vader in this deck, so he's always going to be uh, immune to attrition less than five. He also requires the opponent to have a total ability of six or more to be able to draw Battle Destiny. So if he's with Jabba, that is just really, really good. You are immediately drawing two Battle Destiny. Your opponent may not be drawing any Battle Destiny. Your opponent will have to get through Chizor first to be able to um, uh, uh, to target Jabba. Um, it's just a fantastic card. Absolutely love Reflections to expand the universe stuff anyway, as you might have noticed on my previous video. Uh, a few more little help for Jabber and the crew, Salacious Crumb. <laughs> we need to have this guy in the deck. Um, it's just a fun little uh, card, but it can be very annoying for our opponents. Uh, either making our opponent to use one force or lose uh, the uh, Destiny card that they drew. It's just really nasty. Of course... Um, uh, it might be a little bit difficult to keep this guy around, but I have a, a fantastic, funny little combo to keep this guy around a little bit longer. We also have Boelo, uh, which again just works really well when he's on Jabba's side. Uh, deploys only to Tatooine or to the same location as Jabba. That's not going to be a problem whatsoever. Decent power, decent ability. Um, and uh, when uh, in a battle at the audience chamber with your alien leader, may cancel one opponent's Bell Destiny just drawn. So if you get this guy down whilst you have Jabba and you have uh, Chizor, your opponent's going to be very, very, very upset <laughs> when they're at the audience chamber. Uh, Lin Mei, you gotta have a sexy Twi'lek in the deck, you can't just have Bip Fortuna. Uh, he's not uh, a sexy Twi'lek in my opinion, just uh, exclamation mark and, uh, you know, asterisk there. Um, Lin Mei, uh, she's a musician, uh, so she will count for her own effect. Uh, X will at least equal one, we don't have any other musicians, but if you feel very spicy one Sunday afternoon, and if you want to build a dark side musician deck, she's definitely a good one to include in that deck. What we really like about her is that uh, bounty hunters will deploy uh, for one less, and you can actually deploy Boba Fett for free to her location, which is just a bog. And, uh, so yeah, I think it's definitely worthwhile the investment of that two force uh, to be able to have nice little shenanigans uh, going on there. But onto the big guys, onto the core of the deck to an extent, I guess maybe not the core because we've already looked at, uh, of course, Jabba being at the palace and just um, uh, making a havoc for your opponent. But we do have Boba Fett with blaster rifle. Oh gosh, I really, really, really wanted to run the Cloud City Boba Fett. I was even looking at the Special Edition Boba Fett. Is it the Special Edition or the or the uh, New Hope? I don't know. Uh, I, I ended up with this guy because it's just a, obviously a very solid option. Um, comes down with the blaster rifle. Um, we don't really care. Well, we don't do carbon freezing, so that pretty much rules out the Cloud City one anyway. Uh, Armor 5, great. Uh, we can deploy him for free to Lin Mei's location. Great. Be able to shoot somebody. Amazing. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just it's a solid card. I absolutely love it. So next one, uh, we have uh, the world famous, the galaxy famous Joss Poor. Um, <laughs> he is predominantly in there because he has an ability of four. Um, he's probably going to be a power three uh, as long as we 
place him to one of our better locations. So power three is not bad at all, but it's really that ability of four that we run this guy uh, in the deck for. And uh, Jaspor, right? Everybody knows Jaspor. Right, let's move on to uh, the more serious contenders. We have Aura Sheng or Sing. Um, yes, the AI version. I think the non-AI version looks a little bit silly. I just those long fingers. That I don't know. I can't deal with them. Uh, but she's amazing. Uh, draws Battle Destiny. Power four. Can steal lightsabers. And if she has a lightsaber on, then she will have some good uh, immunity against attrition as well. Uh, well, actually, she has uh, immunity to less than three with a lightsaber, immunity to less than five. Is it likely that she's going to be able to steal lightsaber? Not particularly, because, of course, often they will be, you know, the built-in lightsabers. But still, she's a bounty hunter. She draws Battle Destiny. Good power. She's in the deck. We have Snuva, our uh, Wookiee bounty hunter. Really nice on that six power, four armor. That's also very good for some, you know, basically double defense value. Um, deploys minus three to same side as any smuggler or bounty. Uh, that ideally is not gonna be really a, a problem. Uh, I will happily pay it a five, but we anyway have some uh, reductions already in the deck. Uh, during your deploy phase, a Vibro X may deploy for free on Snuva from reserve deck. And uh, when uh, he excludes uh, 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 a target with the Vibro X, then he can capture that target instead. Of course, we do have a Vibro X in the deck. Oh, definitely one of my favorite ones, Jodo Cast. Really cool, just... Uh, you know he doesn't mind if he's uh, if he's um, being mistaken for Boba Fett. I love that little um, um, flavor text up there. Good power, good ability. Not the greatest, but he's definitely still a bounty hunter. Uh, if an opponent draws more than one Battle Destiny, may cancel one. Once per turn, while firing a weapon or blaster, may take uh, may target for free. Add two to total weapon destiny. May be targeted by hidden weapons, and he's got that infamous um, land speed of three, which of course you also get from well, not the Boba Fett we run, but you do get it from other Boba Fett. So uh, yeah, it's the jetpack style. Uh, so I thought, hey, well, listen, Jodo Cast can cancel battle destiny has a very good land speed so he can go to deal with certain problems may target for free with a blaster rifle so we have a couple of things in the deck for this guy IG-88 with a riot gun you gotta have IG-88 in a bounty hunter deck um, he is a really solid droid um, power 4, armor 5, brilliant stuff um, he can uh, target for free, and he can capture if Destiny plus one is higher than the defense value. And very importantly, adds one Bell Destiny if alone, or with your other bounty hunter. And usually we want him to be with another bounty hunter, so then we get two Destiny draws. Hopefully, um, well, yeah, have a team of ability of four, and then have IGATA there. He can still draw Battle Destiny if he's on his own, but he will draw an extra one if he's with an Ability 4 team. And then that's it for Bounty Hunters, but we do run a Big Bad Mole. Uh, and again, this is the AI one. This is I actually specifically went out and got this card. Um, I've got the non-AI version, and I think that this AI Darth Mole has the best slash second best image. Um, Darth Maul, Young Apprentice, the AI version, I think has the best art. But when it comes to functionality, when it comes to just a blanket good Darth Maul card, to me, this is the one to go with. Uh, Power 7, Armor 6, that's already fantastic. We can potentially get him down for free onto the Desert Landing site. And um, 
it generally speaking deploys minus two to Tatooine anyway so that's going to be amazing uh, during your control phase uh, may lose one force to dual opponent's Jedi present that can be very useful and uh, immune to attrition less than five not only that but your opponent will have to have uh, a character with an ability higher than three to be able to actually have battle destiny otherwise if they have two characters of ability of two I think they're gonna draw the battle destiny what well, they will but it's going to be zero so this is just another way to kind of choke our opponent from uh, from having a free reign of having battle destiny draws we can cancel we can um, make their number higher with Shizor uh, we can ensure that our opponent has um, just some you know solid solid characters in play so uh, for Mole, we have Mole's lightsaber. Fantastic card. I do like the uh, uh, I do like the uh, double-handed lightsaber as well. But I think, generally speaking, I don't want to lose force to be able to activate it. And this is just a, a straight up gives us plus one force drain, and it just gives us all the nice abilities of lightsabers without any. Um, Drawback. Boba Fett's blaster rifle is specifically in here to give it to Jodo Cast. Um, I just want to have Jodo Cast equipped with Boba Fett's blaster rifle if we don't have Boba Fett down with his blaster rifle. That's a very important thing to keep in mind that of course if you have Boba Fett with his blaster rifle down you can't play this card. You can only have one. Uh, it's got that one single dot there that's very important. Um, but generally speaking again an excellent blaster rifle. Uh, it allows us to repeat fire uh, which can be really devastating for our opponent. In case uh, we can't play this, we do have one Imperial Blaster in here as well uh, for uh, for Jodo Cast, partic particularly for Jodo Cast. But again, any one of these can go on Orishing as well if you want to. Uh, Imperial Blaster is actually a good weapon in my opinion. Uh, it can be really useful just to get rid of uh, little uh, guys that don't really put up much of a fight, but they can be quite. Uh, nasty with some of the effects that they may have and of course as I said for Snuva we have Vibro X here to exclude opponents characters from battling and of course on Snuva um, well not only do we save three force because it's quite expensive to deploy this um, but it is also going to allow us to capture if it's on Snuva uh, now generally speaking of course our bounty hunters they don't really have uh, a huge amount of uh, destiny value uh, so that's of course where the Imperial Blaster Vibrex will start to come into the picture as well slightly higher um, slightly higher numbers when it comes to drawing destiny but the destiny number in this deck is fairly poor um, just again purely as I said it's predominantly a casual deck and uh, we're just trying to be like just just annoy our opponents here and there anyway on to vehicles we run two copies of skiff because of course you want to jazz around on Tatooine it deploys for minus one on Tatooine power three maneuver three land speed three if you definitely want to get Jabba somewhere else put him on the skiff and let him go what's really cool about this is that it may move as a react and because it is uh, an, uh, not an enclosed vehicle the passengers can jump off and one card that I think is absolutely amazing uh, this little uh, transport vehicle named Mobquet or Mob Mobkeet A1 Deluxe Floater um, may carry two passengers moves for free if Jabba or any bounty hunter aboard uh, also may move for free as a react only uh, to a battle where you have a thief smuggler or bounty hunter so basically this little vehicle allows your other bounty hunters 
to 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 go and 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 help <laughs> your bounty hunter in need which is i guess this this should be the official vehicle of the bounty hunters guild um because this is exactly what it does your bounty hunters in trouble while well, the bounty hunter is on this little mopcat can immediately float over there as a react and <laughs> save their butts so wow it's just so cool but yeah all the vehicles can uh move as a react which is of course important when you want to cover ground. For space, uh, as I said, we have a little uh, defense for space. We do have Dengar in Punishing 1. I uh, must say that this is an excellent, excellent spaceship. Now, if you think you can use this uh, for Bounty Hunter shenanigans, you cannot, even though we know that Dengar is in the ship. This ship definitely does not count as a bounty hunter. Nevertheless, very solid stuff. We can pull it with the objective. Uh, we immediately get a power uh, 4 because Dengar adds 2, adds ability of 2. And when in battle, adds 1 total battle destiny for each opponent starships present. And cancels opponent's immunity to attrition here. Very nice, very nasty card, especially when it is paired up with Zuckus in Mist Hunter. Zuckus in Mist Hunter is another independent one, you can get it with the objective. Uh, permanent pilot is Zuckus, provides ability of 4, so immediately draws Battle Destiny and adds 2 to power, so it's a power 4 ship. You can add another pilot, you can add 3 passengers, uh, so you can obviously still buff this. Uh, Starfighter, and uh, unless opponent has a total ability of higher than six piloting here, opponent's total destiny here equals zero. So it basically does pretty much um, alongside what Chizor and Mole does not specifically the same, but in the vein of the effect of those two. Um, characters. And then finally we have Virago for well, you can throw a Chisor in here and then you can just give some extra support for these guys. It is another independent starship. You can get it for free. Well, not you can't, you can't get it for free but you can search it from your reserve deck. Uh, we do have a permanent pilot there. Provides ability of 1. Chisor suspends permanent pilot. He deploys minus 3 aboard. And when Chizor is piloting, adds one battle destiny, so he's going to draw two, and immune to attrition less than five. So it's just a nice little, very compact but neat space package, allows us to just be annoying enough that, uh, if nothing else at least, uh, we're, if we can't get the uh, buff of Tatooine, we don't want our opponent to get the buff of Tatooine either. So uh, we got these guys, to we got these ships to take care of that. For effects, uh, we have Bad Feeling, Have I, just to make uh, all the big light side characters deployed more expensively. We got Quick Reflexes, uh, which of course is very good for a Bounty Hunter deck. Uh, during your draw phase, you may use two Force to search or Lost Pile, take one Hidden Weapons into hand, or take any one Blaster and immediately deploy it for free. Uh, so that's another one of the reasons why we have the Imperial Blaster in there as well, but we're generally just going to be using this to get hidden weapons. No Bargain is in here, uh, which will allow us to... Uh, rebels are deployed plus two, while no Imperials are at any Jabba's Palace sites, and uh, non-unique aliens are each forfeit plus one, not that that matters too much, it doesn't matter at all. And then this is the little combo. Why would you not put Vader's cape onto Salacious Crumb to make Salacious Crumb? <laughs> um, immune to attrition less than five. <laughs> and also, um, um, when in battle, adds one to each of your Bell Destiny draws. That is just the icing on the cake. Salacious Crumb with Vader's cape. Just the best combo. Clearly. Finally, let's look at interrupts. Uh, we have one copy of Alice Hellrot, just for mobility. We have a copy of Double Back, uh, predominantly to make sure that uh, we can uh, 
well, just get bounty hunters from our deck. Uh, it's a lost interrupt, so of course it will be a one-time use, but it can get you that ever so important piece for the puzzle. We have Restlook Ralph, uh, which is another lost interrupt, uh, but it will allow us to add Battle Destiny uh, plus one or plus two, just giving us a better chance of survival. Two copies of Hidden Weapons, very important, I think, for a, a Bounty Hunter deck, especially with Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett or a character with Mandalorian armor, and we did look at Jodo cast, is, uh, can be targeted by Hidden Weapons. Um, da -da 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 -da, during the weapon phase of a battle, uh, target one opponent's character, present draw destiny. 0, 1, no effect, 2, 3, target immediately captured, 4, 5, target hit, 6, plus target immediately lost. We're not really going to get 6 pluses. 2s and 3s are good enough for us to capture that target. Maybe get a 4 and a 5 for a hit, but we're absolutely happy with just capturing. Okay, wrong pile. There you go. We have a copy of Sonic Bombardment, so we can use this on Jabba's Palace Dungeon. Just one copy of Dark Maneuvers, A for that 6 value, which of course is beneficial definitely, but B also to be able to give some extra shenanigans for our Space Force. If an opponent wouldn't necessarily expect a Dark Maneuvers in a Bounty Hunter deck. Two Imperial Barriers and one copy of Nagok in all similar fashion. If our opponent drops something nasty, we're just going to stop that from battling. Nice and straightforward. Okay, average uh, destiny values. We have a copy of Human Shield. Uh, Human Shield, nice destiny value of 5. Uh, we're normally going to be uh, using it for uh, using a capture to be lost uh, instead of the Bounty Hunter. We have two copies of We Have a Prisoner, again, just to allow us predominantly to capture. Uh, that is the main purpose. Uh, it can be good in a space battle in some cases as well, uh, but it's predominantly the, the, the first effect. We have two copies of Jabba's Through with you. Again, just to buff the bounty hunters. Uh, add one battle destiny if a bounty hunter fired a weapon, or during your deploy phase, deploy on your bounty hunter one character weapon from reserve deck, reshuffle. Again, good destiny values. And then the last two cards are, well, uh, Sniper and Dark Strike is good for uh, either the bounty hunters with a weapon or Mole if he's got his lightsaber on, so it makes sense to run it. And then finally, we have a copy of Mole Strikes. Again, just really good destiny value and also giving us some uh, extra edge. Uh, to take uh, Maul's lightsaber out of the deck. That's predominantly what we have this card in here for. So this is it guys. Thank you very much for joining me for this yet again fairly long deck review. I was trying to make this fast as soon as possible. Apparently that is pretty much impossible for me. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed your monthly dose of Star Wars CCG goodness. I will be back uh, uh, towards uh, the third third of August with another deck. I'm building two decks. Uh, they're about halfway there. I don't know which one will be ready first. If not, we might just do some review around some other stuff, but stay tuned. Next month, as I promised, every month there will be a Star Wars CCG video, so keep your eyes peeled. It's coming. I hope you enjoyed this one. Perhaps we can... Uh, or um, have some nice little conversation in the comment section below how you would uh, upgrade this deck, how you could make this a little bit more competitive. And also, please like, share, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Up until next time, Busting and signing out. Peace. I made a force be with you.